of the Holy Spirit is found in John, the third chapter and the third verse. Let's look at that a little more. Uh, three. Would you stand as you, when you get it? Amen. St. John 3. Let's go to the first verse, Bill. Check out that one. Nicodemus comes to Christ. We shared with you last week the idea of gener regeneration that has occurred. I assume with all of you, I would dare say, I've been born again. Turn your name and tell him I've been born again. Amen. I was born one time. That was my mother's birth that she gave and born again. Jesus gave you. That's what we call the gener regeneration. That was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Are y'all with me? The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou uh, doest except God be with him. Thank you. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, that he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot see the kingdom of God. The eyes of the heart is what we see from our perspective is that you must be born again. Let your say man again real loud, y'all. Let, let them know we're at church today. Because seg segregation, uh, segregation and re- generation has more than one part. We've been born again. Regeneration is that new man or woman that is moving in. But conversion is the progressive experience of becoming acquainted with the new man. What a wonderful change in my life has been made since Jesus came into my heart. We often heard that in the old days. It's still the norm since Jesus came into my heart. Yes, Jesus came in my heart. There was a flood of joy that came over my soul like 
see bills rose since Jesus came into my heart. That sound to me like a new man moving in. The things I used to do, I don't do anymore. Places I used to go, that's where the old folk would say, that still is the norm because that is a new man, not a patched up man since I gave my life to Jesus. I'm not just uh, moving in, but conversion is a progressive experience of becoming acquainted with the new man. This is what Paul was saying when he told those Corinthians in 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, the 17th verse, write it down. He says, therefore, uh, if any man, or if any man be in Christ, he is a what? He is a what? He is a new creature. God did not uh, patch me up. I'm new all the way through. It's not second-handedly given to me, but uh, there's a, a new creation. Old things are passed away. Why don't you tell your neighbor some old things? I got to get rid of those old things. Amen. I'm dead to uh, my salvation without Christ. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things. I'm a new man. I got a new walk. How many of you got a new walk? I got a new talk. The body comes now under a new management. Uh, amen. I said the body uh, comes under new management. And here is a thought for some of us. We talk about crucifying the flesh or uh, resisting the devil. We do not, uh, we're not talking about quitting this and quitting that. We're not talking about self abrogation, self. Uh, reformation, old uh, rehabilitation, but we're talking about moving close to God. The closer we get to God, somebody uh, hearing me under the sound of my weak voice, we uh, the closer we get to God, the more the old man, the old woman is a disappear and you see the less you feed the old uh, man the woman the weaker uh, we become we cannot afford to uh, don't feed him and he'll lose his grip on you but uh, don't concentrate on not feeding him you're concentrating on feeding the new man. If you feed the new man, he'll soon crowd out. Let the church say crowd out. Uh, the old man. If you uh, concentrate on allowing the new man to be fed, you will see God working for you as he did with Israel when he brought them out of Egypt. He protected their rank. One in uh, the back was just as safe as the one in the front because conversion brings about uh, some willingness experiences. Have any of you had a new willingness experience? Let me see your hand. I'd like to see it. I'd like to know who I'm preaching to here. Don't don't worry. He'll feed you when you get hungry. Somebody ought to say, man. He'll feed you. He he will satisfy your thirst when you get thirsty. He will give you 
uh, to see the rivers. He'll open up the rivers of water and carry you safely over your circumstances, over your problems, over your situation, because once God's Spirit indwells you, you become his tabernacle where sacrifices are made, where daily cleansing is done, where the light of God shines, where the bread of heaven is eaten, where sweet-smelling incense goes up before the Lord, where the mercy seat is found. Is there anybody... Uh, that needs some mercy here. You see, if it had not been for the Lord, uh, it, uh, without mercy, I'd be in a bad shape where mercy seed is found, where uh, Shinaka glory is seen for all of those uh, in camp round about you. What happened is you become a dwelling place. You become a dwelling place where experiencing his ever present. He's everywhere, uh, omnipresent. He, he become, uh, you become his abode where God works in you both to will and to do of his great pleasure. Somebody uh, see Philippians, the second chapter and 13th verse, you'll find out that regeneration is the seed of God that breaks open and take root in your heart. But conversion is the growth of that seed. Let the church say he, that's the growth of the seed. That's the growth of the seed that should produce internal as well as external uh, evidence in your life. I looked at my hand. They look new. I looked at my feet and they did too because that's what we dealt with on last Sunday. We dealt with the method of regeneration. Let the church say a method of regeneration. You see, the method of regeneration is twofold. First of all, it's external because through the hearing of God's Word, it becomes internal. Through the receiving of God's Word, both of them is initiated by the Holy Spirit. First of all, you ought to write it down. There is a calling. Let the church say calling. There must be a confession. There will be a conversion. We're talking about the method of regeneration. You see, the method of regeneration is those twofold things that I have given to you, internal and external, but there is a magnitude of regeneration. Magnitude simply means ablement. It simply means powerful. It simply means capability. All right, we already know of the omnipotence of God that is his all power the all-powerness of God. He speaks and things happen. Oh, come on now. Something good is going to happen for you today if you get closer to God. He speaks and things happen. He closes his eyes and things disappear. He walks and the earth trembles. James Weldon Johnson said he claps his hand in the thunder roll. But let's take a look at the doxology found in Jude, the 24th chapter and the 25th verse. And consider the magnitude of regeneration. Remember that regeneration has to do with the Greek word. 
And it literally talks about birth again. Let church say birth again. Because birth again, not from mother's womb, birth again from up above. That comes through the mighty working of the Holy Spirit. So when we look at the magnitude of regeneration, it has to do with the person of Jesus Christ. The power of Jesus Christ and the purpose of Jesus Christ. Say that again. The person of Jesus Christ, the power of Jesus Christ, and the purpose, Brother Willie, of Jesus Christ. Listen at the doxology. Now unto him, now unto him, regeneration is made possible because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Well, let's see if I can get a little plainer. His death, his burial, his resurrection. It is his desire for us. Can the church say that it is his desire? All of you, not some of you. It is his desire. I hear a few more voices. It is his desire for us that we might have light. And have it what? All of y'all. For his what? Oh, Jesus is the Son of God who came all the way from glory down to reconcile you with his Father. He do that for me. He provides the seed of holiness that can be planted in fertile soil of man's heart and produce fruits of righteousness. That's you. That's good news. You ought to be shouting. Don't get quiet. Jesus is the one who works out the whole experience of regeneration. You had nothing to do with it. You had nothing more to do than just to receive him in your life. So once again, I want you to tell your neighbor it's the magnitude. Because the magnitude of regeneration refers to the power of Jesus. Is that making sense? Of Jesus Christ. Here's what he said. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Jude 24. Y'all read that? Read that, Sister Cagnolotti. Read that. Yeah. There you go. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. And to present you before the what? Faultless. Amen. He'll pick you up when you fall. I said he'll pick you up. Somebody is in church today. He will pick you up. When you're falling, 
exceeding joy. That's Jesus. Oh, y'all in church now. Oh, I got some folks who say man here, here. Amen. It talks, take power. It take power, y'all. It take power to keep a sinner who is saved by the grace of God from falling. Okay, without stumbling. Sure-footed. It took power. Y'all hear me good. It took power. It took power to save you. Isn't it good to hear about you? About you. It, it, it takes power to save you and it takes power to keep you. It wasn't in your power. It was not in your strength that you were saved. So consequently, it could never be your power and your strength. He put his power, his treasure in these earthen vessels out. A divine Savior putting his treasure in your trash. You were saved. And consequently, it could never be your power and strength that will keep you. Because over in John, the 10th chapter, you can write that down. In the 28th verse, he said, I give unto you them eternal life. And they shall never perish. You're saved forever. You can't lose nothing but the joy. You can lose the joy, but David prayed, restore the joy, because sometimes it get tiresome coming to church. Sometimes it get a little weary and, and, and all that stuff. But I give you eternal life. I'm going to keep you forever. You ain't going to never have to die. Whisper to your neighbor, tell him, I ain't going to die. I ain't going to die. No, I die one time. That's when I received Christ in my life. I, I became a new creature in Christ. I'll never perish. I'll never perish. Neither, sh I, I tell you, can't nobody pluck you out of the hands of God. Cancer? Huh? COVID-19? Flu? Even a cold sometimes get real rough on you. Hey, Amen. Get rough sometimes. I give them eternal life. And you can live forever. Your mama that went on before you, she's in heaven. She ain't dead. She's much alive. Your mother and your fathers, those of you who lost loved ones, and we've all lost some loved ones. Isn't it good to know that your relatives is waiting for you up there for you to come? But you should see you ain't ready. So God's going to leave you down here because you you weren't ready. Mama was ready, but you, you ain't ready. You're still here. Neither can any man pluck you out of my hand. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Why? Because I and uh, my father are what? Yeah, not two, but it's just one. David the king even knew something about this. He knew something about this powerful God who offers eternal security. Oh, yeah. He wrote in the familiar, that familiar, and I don't like really saying familiar, but I got to say familiar because no man and no woman can get so familiar with the word. Sometimes I preach things and I preach them over. I 
do some homework, try to get them straightened and out of the way. Say, you preach that, that's for me. And no, it, it, it never gets for me. I don't care how long you, many times you say, the Lord is my shepherd. See, it's more to than just the Lord is my shepherd. It's a whole lot of, you can turn around and say something else, but you you run out trying to find out all that God is, but He's given you everything, y'all. He, he shared with you. He's just He wants to bless you. And the closer you get to Him, uh, the less problem you have because He's dealing with the presence, not only the penalty of sin in your life that God died for, it, and you accepted Him through you faith and so on, but he also provides you presently because his power is in you. The power of God, this power he's getting, it comes of God. Then he say, yeah, oh, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What will happen? You ain't going to go around being scared. You're going to say, I will fear. Uh, I, what you got to be scared of and all that? COVID-19 is not that powerful. I, I, I will fear uh, no evil. I ain't going to be scared because surely God and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell help me y'all in the house of the Lord so we got magnitude we got magnitude means ablement magnitude mean powerful magnitude mean capable he's able to keep you from falling because it took power to wash away the skin I don't need no sand uh, sanitizer. He had to deal with me. I don't need no mask now. The stain of my sin. He took power to be able to bear my heavy load, my problems I'm facing every day. And can't nobody in here honestly say they ain't never needed no power. That that wasn't there. He helped me to bear my heavy burden, my load of guilt, my load of shame, because it took power to dispel the darkness of my sorrow. Can you say, man, took power to dis misbell and dispel all of my darkness, all of my corrupt feelings that I've had in my life because I'm a new man. I am a new woman. You ought to be glad that you can turn to somebody and tell them, I'm a new woman. I'm a new man. Can I get a witness, Doug? God bless your heart. It was the magnitude of God's grace. It was a magnitude. That's what happened. That they happened. That did. That that happened. It took love and forgiveness. Oh, how we need to have some forgiveness. That wrought regeneration. I've been born again in my soul. Now under Him, the person who is able to keep you from falling that's the power and to present you faultless everything you've done in life that you're ashamed of God saved you you know about shouting here yeah. Y'all believe me, don't you? It's in the Word. Present you faultless before the present. That's salvation now. You don't have to work out no soul salvation. Because you ain't got nothing to work out. 
God worked it out for you. Somebody to say, man, you can't be saved and be lost. Can't nobody pluck you out of the hands of God. Uh, to know, uh, uh, 19 can't, can't, can't take it out of you. Amen. Because if it decides, uh, if God allows you to transition, you ain't got nothing to worry about because you're saved. Amen. You don't have to, it ain't just because you save here in Vallejo for a minute or two. You, God is able to keep you from falling, children, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with the exceeding joy. That's his purpose. Y'all feel me? The magnitude of God, it reaches way out to God's grace, God's love. God see you when he see you. He don't see Eliza when you, you come before the judgment seat of God. You don't see Eliza. God, when he look at you, you're righteous. Every one of you in here who've been saved, who are saved, God sees you. Some of us say, man. Now to him, the purpose, who is able to keep you from falling, the power. To present you faultless before the presence of his glory. That's the purpose. So what do we have there now? I'm looking at this. You got the power. You got the person. And you got the purpose. You, were, you wasn't born just to take up space. You were special in the sight of God. When God look at you and you, he said, be ye perfect as you, your father in heaven is perfect. And so God see Jesus in you. He don't see no sin. He doesn't see in a child of God. Now, all things work together for good to those who love God and for those called. But see, not everybody, all things. That's a big deal. <laughs> Gigantic. That, that doesn't go for a sinner. Uh, all things work together. Everything happened in your life. There's a reason behind it. There's a purpose. God got you here for something. That's what make you so special. Amen. You can holler like, who is, who is that you say? You can't touch this. Who is that? Hamdra. Beat him across the head again there for me. Hammer. That's that one I wanted to get. The purpose for regeneration is the same as it has always been. That is to bring you back to the house, to bring you back to the Father. You see the fruitless It'll help you to be fruitless, faultless before his presence or his glory with exceeding joy. That's your purpose. You ought to be happy and give God a hand. Oh, Lord, allow me to tell you.
tell you that regeneration has nothing to do with reformation. But transformation, not rehabilitation, but spiritual renovation, not recycling. You ain't no wet bottle. You somebody. Not rehabilitation, but spiritual renovation. God, when he saved you, he didn't pat you up. Oh. He come over Fleetwood and uh, putting on. I'm going to pat him up. So, But God didn't come here to pat you up. You are a new. Not a recycling of old stuff, but generation of the new. Don't you know God was with you in the beginning? He's with you right now. That he'll be with you if you don't transition between now and tomorrow. But he'll, you'll be in heaven. We'll be left one left over. But generation of the new. Because if he says he is going to present us faultless, that means that he is working on you every day. Aren't you glad God is working on you? Oh, I'd be in bad shape up here if God wasn't working on me. But thank God he's going to present me falling. He come over Fleetwood. Bring him on in. Let him come in. Because I see Jesus in him. He's working on me every me every day. That means that he walks with us through those experiences that would normally leave you badly scarred. You got folks who are just scarred for life. Because they hasn't taken hold of what God has purposed and made them to be. God didn't make you to fill up space. You got something about yourself. Uh, hearty, y'all got something about yourself that can't nobody take the place of what God intended for you to get. Whatever it is. He walks with us through bad experiences. Don't determine. I heard somebody praying while that was good, Willie. Our circumstances. Uh, you can't gauge your life how well you're doing just by the day. Because it's something about it. I don't care what you're going through. It that doesn't necessarily going to be that way tomorrow. So shut up and be quiet. Leave God alone. Let, let God let God rule in your life because he ain't going to let nothing happen to you. We've gone through all this stuff with this virus and all that, and then you were scared to death. Now I look at you. Here you are sitting up here looking at me. Through those experiences that would normally leave us badly scarred, Hostile, angry, faithless, because you don't believe God. But instead, we discover there is a bomb in Gilead that can heal a sin-sick soul. I don't need no oxygen tank. Might later on, but thank God for the oxygen you in tank, I ain't got to worry about it. God can handle that too. But instead, we discover there is a bomb that can heal a sin-sick soul. And our strength 
is renewed day by day. There is a man who will meet you at your pool of Bethesda that will tell you to take up your bed and walk. Don't think I don't care how sick, how long sickness has been with you. Man at the pool was 38 years. He was sick, and God came along and just looked at him. And he got up. I ain't got nobody to help me. They get up. I've been here 38 years. Jesus said, "Yeah, but do you want to be made whole?" You see, some folks don't want to be whole because when 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 you're whole, that means the benevolent can't help you. You suit social security check. You ain't got to worry about it. I'm whole. Can I get a witness? As a man, it was amen. Thirty-eight years. Every time. Now you got all the everywhere I go for sale sign up all over the country. In here in Vallejo, want, want, want to, uh, we need some workers. We need some dishwashers. They don't want to work because they take them off that Social Security. Something's going to happen. You ain't going to get no more Social Security. Tell somebody no more. There's a man. I ain't ready for y'all. Sit down. There's a man who was standing at the where y'all going? Y'all better be quiet by me. Somebody will say man here. Somebody going to get this. There's a man who will stand at the closed tomb of your life and call you from the dead. Oh, there is a man who doesn't need a fish market, doesn't need a bakery, but can feed you until you're satisfied. This man whose name is Jesus came to deal with his father. God the Father is the originator of our regeneration. God the Son is the observer of our regeneration. And God the Holy Ghost is the occupier of your renaissance. Somebody say, man. Amen. Amen, walls. Please, um, I get happy when I think about what the Lord has done for me. Y'all didn't hear me. That's why I think about Jesus who gave his life way back on Calvary. And every day he walks with me. Yeah, Lord. Ever since y'all, 
present with you. Nobody, nobody.
him who is able to keep us from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his exceeding glory be majesty and power hits now and forevermore let us say hey. Hit it hard, don't break it. And the elbow. <laughs> All righty. And then look.